had been both hard and long. And Bunyip in her billabong waded into water deep and settled softly down to sleep. From a mulga tree nearby, a noise began, and suddenly a tinny tranny, loud and roarty, was building out the week's top 40. And then was heard a vacuum cleaner, and the strains of La Palima. For cleaning house among the blossom was Bunyip's neighbour, Old Man Possum. Quiet, please, persuaded she. But once a possum's up a tree, it's very hard for those well-meaning to dissuade him from the spring cleaning. The noise continued all the night. Poor Bunyip felt and looked a fright when the sun took his first peep. She'd scarcely had a wink of sleep. She took an early, tuneful shower, when from on high, Please, at this hour, must you be a rowdy beast? Some folk up here must sleep at least. It was the possum, so nocturnal, and when Bunyip's morning journal rustled, or a tinkling spoon rattled in the early noon, the possum tossed down an old boot and called the Bunyip noisy coot. And so it went on all the day. And when the night came, Bunyip lay down wearily. Then Possum washed the dishes, beat the carpet, squashed the cushions, swept the stairway treads, and moved and moved about the beds. Bunyip spent a wakeful night, pondering her doleful plight. When Possum, with the rising sun, returned to bed, she took her drum and beat upon it, hell for leather, and then banged saucepan lids together. After that, with her beard bristling, she ran around the mulga, whistling. Throughout this day-long entertainment, Possum showed a great restraint. But after dark, with stifled groan, Bunyip heard a saxophone. A wailing, croaking, throaty one, as if from student just begun. Bunyip now was pretty weary, eyes are watering and bleary. Granny Platt poked up her head. You silly creatures will be dead of pneumonia. Your silly squabble is all a load of squeak and bubble. If you can't divide the day, one of you should move away. The Bunyip thought, you know, she's right. I'll sneak away this very night. That old man possum silly fool is really quite impossible. So Bunyip went. She moved along to other side of Billabong. How lovely and how quiet, she sighed. I'll sleep at last. And then espied upon a branch of Brigolo, the possum with his portmanteau. Oh, really, it's too bad, cried she. And possum could not but agree. And so they would be yet, it's feared, if platypus had not appeared. You two again, she cried aghast. But Bunyip and Old Poss were past complaining. All that swapping bases had reduced them to cot cases with laryngitis of the throat. Old Granny Platypus could gloat. I told you so, was all she said, and promptly put them both to bed. And honey lemon drinks they sipped as she rubbed their chests with eucalyptus. I wish you'd both apologize, she said, her eyes raised to the skies. I'm sorry, Bunyip's loudest whisper, that you're such a rowdy mister. And I'm sorry, whispered down, that you're a big flat-footed clown. Old Granny Platt could only sigh. Shh, was the duo's hushed reply. Thank you.